Hi everyone. So apparently I'm working on this book that's never ending. <laughs> Still have not finished it and I really, to be honest, haven't worked on it at all for the past, I don't know, since probably the last time I talked to you, which has been a while. Um, I'm still kind of not really feeling it, so I've been doing a little bit of um, ephemera and stuff like that. And I'm not necessarily doing it for this book. It might end up in it, and it might not. But I haven't posted a video in such a long time, I thought maybe I'd show you the things that I've been working on. So I've been using up scraps of paper and this is cardstock actually, it's lightweight cardstock from a paper collection cane company I think it is. And I've just been making these little tiny mini envelopes. Um, yeah, they're kind of not for anything but <laughs> they're cute. So, like, like I, I've been using this, the uh, envelope maker. I made a slightly larger size. And this is just scrap. Um, I had messed up a page that was tea stain, and I didn't want to waste it. So I thought, oh, I'll make up little tiny envelopes. So that's what I did here. And then this one, I have loads of book paper. Loads. And I'm sure you guys are the same. It's hard to get rid of stuff like this. And it... It already been pre-stained up and I think, I don't know if it, it doesn't really have a scent. So it might be tea, although it's pretty dark, so it's probably coffee. Um, and I was going to use it as flaps in this book and then change my mind. I am i don't know what I'm doing with the flaps yet, but I thought, well, it's out, it's been uh, creased. So I thought, okay, well, let's make some envelopes. So you don't need one of these to make an envelope. It's quite simple to make an envelope on your own. So I thought I'd show you how I did this one. Um, I know all the wording is upside down, but so what? I don't care. <laughs> I just worked with the crease that's already there. So just make it more of a crease. You can make it any size you want. I basically just folded it um, to the wording. Uh, this page, let's just measure it for you. Uh, yeah, it's about five and a quarter, probably eight. Probably eight inches. Yep, eight inches. Just from an old um, book I got at the dollar store. Just tore it apart. So, all I'm going to do is fold in the edge on both sides. I'll likely trim it. This isn't going to be anything fancy or super precise. So the edges aren't even going to match. But you can cut it down after. Because you don't really need a real wide side to create your, your little envelope. Now, when you tea stain or coffee stain book paper, because this is a cheap book, uh, it gets pretty brittle. So, you know, if you're planning on putting anything in your little envelope, which I am, there'll be a little card or something in there. So you're taking things in and out, in and out. I like to keep the extra and then glue it down. And you've got a nice firm spot. Same with the uh, flap. I did that on the flap as well. And it's also a great way to use up. I've got loads of these. Brads, I never use them for anything. I think I had them when I was scrapbooking and I used to use them in my scrapbook pages, but some of them are super pretty and I thought, well, that kind of helps weight your flap down as well and uses up stock. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do today. And all I do is decide, okay, well this, I'm not going to bend this one to the outside like I did with this one. I'm going to bend it to the inside, I think. Well, we'll start with that anyways and see where we go from there. So if, you know, for my new subscribers as well as new crafters, if you don't have a bone folder, that's probably your first purchase next to a good ruler, a good pair of scissors, um, and a good glue. Those, to me, are crucial. Can't do without those. 
this is a Martha Stewart. I don't know if you can still get these, but I like it because of the curved edge. I use this a lot uh, in my bookmaking and covering the putting the paper on the covers. So if you've watched other videos, you'll notice that. So we're going to go ahead with that. Now, I don't want a pocket that deep, so I think I am going to bend it back like I did with this one. That'll shorten it. I don't really want to get rid of the plane. You can do a lot with that later. If you want a little bit more lettering showing, yeah, you can fold it even further down. So remember, creasing is crucial. Uh, because it eliminates a lot of bulk if you firmly crease it down. Now you're going to glue all this, so don't worry about any of that, okay? Then you have to decide on your flap. So I'm going to fold it down this way and see where I'm at. I think that's going to make a really nice size flap if I turn some up, okay? So, like I said, I don't care it's upside down. It doesn't matter to me. I'm going to put this one on the inside. Just to the start of the writing. I don't know if I need to telephoto in maybe a little bit. That might help you guys. There we go. A little bit. So, easy peasy. There's no measuring right? It's just aesthetics. Look at it, go, yeah, I like that. Uh, what can I fix? Okay, so if you notice the flap here, you can see the side. Now, if you're super picky, you can just open that up and fold it out just a hair more. Because also, when you tea stain anything, you change the paper size because of the ripples and stuff in the papers. It's not going to be super even. And that's just what it is. Okay, so that's good for me. Now, this is where I would trim. Okay, first off, you want to trim away some of this, and you're going to want to trim this down because you don't need it glued to there. You only need one piece. So you can either cut this one away or cut this one away. I Typically, I cut this away. Okay. So you open it up. And you go in line with your first crease. Am I on camera? Yes, I am. Do I need to get closer? There we go. Just to the edge, right there. Open it up. Do the same thing there. Now, I always cut it again on a little bit of an angle so that when you fold it up, you're not going to get any bulk. And I'm going to cut this because I don't need it that wide. So let's cut that around all the way to the bottom. Well, actually, that's get cut away, but let's just do that anyway. Cut this off. Doesn't have to be perfect. Okay? So this part, once this is glued, this part is what's going to glue to this part, which is your flap. So now I'm going to cut this whole thing away. And like I said, you don't have to be perfect. You know why I say that, right? It's because I'm not perfect. <laughs> Sometimes it's a little hard for me to see the crease line. Okay. So we have this. Right? Now, I'm going to glue this part down. Let's get rid of this. Not one of those people that can work with, um, you know, a bunch of stuff. Oh, did I do this side? 
And I want to cut that part away. Okay, so this is my flap. I don't want this showing, so I'm going to cut it from here. Trim this away. So there'll be no measurements for you in this if you're looking for it. Yeah, there won't be any. Just because you can make it out of any size you want. You've just got the fold down. That's all that matters. So basically, if, if I wasn't folding this open, Okay, so basically you have one fold, which would go up like this, and then you'd have your flap, so we're saying this is the flap, it would go down like that. It's just three folds. I'm just folding it a lot because I want to make the envelope more sturdy. Okay, you don't have to do that. If you're working with, you know, paper that's in really good shape, you don't need to do all this. It's not necessary. So first I'm going to glue this down. And you want to just make sure you get right to the very edge of this part. And you're going to trim it up later because like I say, you'll see what I mean when I flip it over and glue it. Once you start using your bone folder to smooth out your glue, you're going to notice your paper grows. So now it's hanging over the edge. So you're just going to trim that off. It's no biggie. Okay, just let your glue dry, otherwise you're going to get glue all over your scissors and it's going to be a royal pain. Okay, so this that is my flap. Now, these are my sides. Well, maybe I was confusing you because I keep looking at it upside down, forgetting I'm going to flip the video. <laughs> okay, I'm going to glue this. Let's see, do I want it on the outside or the inside? Hmm, do I, do I, do I? Let's see. <laughs> well, if I do this one like this. Oh, it's actually facing the right way. And then do this one like this. The whole thing's facing the right way. Ha ha. I'm going to have to either flip this over, which I just might do, like so. Or not flip it at all and add my trim here. I think I'm going to do that. That will give a little bit of weight. Yeah. So I'm going to leave it like that. I'm going to bone fold this part here. Now, I could trim that away, but I kind of want I want that stiffness in there. Yeah, I think I'll just leave it just like that. So, let's trim this off first. Now, probably glue that down. And then glue that up. That works for me. Before I do any of that, I'm going to ink. Because I don't know what will show, I will do the whole thing. Maybe I don't need to do that part. No, nope, just the outside. I love the way inking looks on things that have been tea stained or coffee stained. This is um, potting soil. It's um, Ranger's product. And it uh, doesn't react to water, so it won't move if it gets wet. I don't know, I just kind of like the color of this. I have loads of ink, and I do use it for different things. You know. 
use this particular ink a lot uh, when I'm doing covers because I will put a medium over top of it and then um, if, if it's done in a an ink that moves then yeah you might end up with a mess so I use this a lot and I guess because I do it's always sitting right there so that's what I grab but you don't have to use that particular ink you can use anything you like That's going to be my little envelope. Inside. Probably have to trim this out a little bit. I think I need to. Looks a little crooked to me. But when all is said and done, you guys, it's a piece of book paper. If you mess it up, big deal. Right? Try again. <laughs> yeah, I think that's going to be prettier like that. So I'll probably glue it right to where I've done the crease. And that'll be a full, a full envelope. Smaller than that one, but like I said, it doesn't matter. It depends on where you crease it. Okay, I'm, I am going to glue this down. I think I'll just do it along the edge. And a little bit in here. So you can see why I trim out the tops. So when when you're folding things over, like if it's lined right up, this one isn't on the flap, but it is on the bottom. So then when you pull this up, this curls. So you need to take that little bit off in a just a little uh, triangle shape. It doesn't have to be a lot, but it's enough to stop it from hitting the edge and creasing. So then we're going to go ahead, let's put this way first. Now this is where you need to be careful. You don't want to get your glue right to the edge of the inside or you're going to glue your, your envelope closed. So I stay away just, you know, a little bit. Same with on the bottom. The top's not as crucial because you're going to have your flap open. And it helps if you flatten out your glue instead of leaving it in a, a profile so it's got a lump in it because then that'll squish more. Okay. So if you take your knob, the nozzle of the glue and push down and move it, it'll flatten it out. Oh, I just did it on the wrong side. This is reality TV, people. <laughs> Make sure it's not sticky at all. If you're unsure that it might be, you can put a piece of... Um, I'll just take one of these out of here. Piece of paper in there. Like so. Okay. That should be good enough. Sticky. 
jeans. Yep. The other thing you might notice when you're using tea stained or coffee stained paper is that your glue will dry really quick. So that didn't stick. There we go. Because it's very porous now. Once you've done that, it's very porous to work with. So you might find, you know, you might have to go back and do a little bit of gluing, touching up here and there. Okay, so there's my flap. And if you look on the back, it's not really sticking out, so that's good. I think I want to add a bit of ink here, though. Forgot to do the front. Okay. And then I'm going to use my trim. Now open up your envelope and have your flap flat. Um, otherwise, like I say, you could end up with glue where you don't want it. Now, that's the right side. The glue along the top. I've had a lot of questions on different glues and stuff. I mean, you guys know my favorite is Aileen's. I use it for pretty much everything. Uh, I do use Gorilla Glue on occasion for metal. However, I found a, a really good glue that's made here um, in BC. I got it at the PE. I think it's made in BC. Let me grab it. Uh, yeah. Oh, it is. It's made in the US. And it's called My Glue. So you guys should be able to get that. Um, brmiessentials.com and this stuff is the best glue I've ever used but it's like I've glued my fingers closed <laughs> use it on chipped nails too if I'm not quite ready or if you you know when you break it and it's way down here yeah I use that works great so that's probably one of my favorite glues for metal but, you know, if I run out of that, uh, my go-to would be Gorilla Glue. And I got that at the exhibition here. So probably home shows and stuff like that, you'd find it. Or you could do it online. I think there's distributors here in Canada. That's why I thought it was from Canada. <clears throat> Guys who sell from their home go to all the exhibitions and stuff like that. Okay, so just down the side and along the bottom here. And I want to do that because I want this to be a little firmer, the uh, flap itself. Just flip it over and then push it down. Another way to avoid getting glue on your fingers when you're doing lace. got to be honest, most of the time I forget to do that though. Okay, so there we have our little lace envelope. And it's a decent size. This one measures almost four inches. And when it's closed, it'd be two and a quarter. So it's a cute size, not as tiny as this one. This one's small. This one's even smaller. It's so cute, right? Now, for these, I'll give you the measurements, but I wanted to put the little brad on there. I, like I say, had loads of them. I saw a yellow one in here, and since I thought I might put it in my yellow one, there's a pretty yellow one. I think I want something flatter, though. Oh, that one's cute. That's got a little clock on it. Yeah. June, 1857. 
That's cool. Okay. Maybe I'll use that one. Maybe not. What else have I got in there? Oh, look at the size of that one. Oh, that's cute. And it says, love everything about today. It's got a little butterfly on it. So we're going to use that one. Plus, it's really nice and skinny here. So I, I'm eyeballing everything, you guys. Uh, I'm not measuring anything. Turn that a little bit. Now, if you really want to flatten them out, just use if you have flat flat nose pliers. Just flatten it out from the middle. You can cover it if you want. You don't want to see that. Isn't that cute? All right. So now we got that. So um, I'll show you the measurements for the smaller envelope. Mary Little Dickens. All right. Now on my board, I've written down my own measurements. Now I know that we are memory keepers. I always want to say makers. We Are Memory Keepers has a mini board for mini envelopes. I'm not wasting my money on buying something that this does. So if you only have this, I'll give you the measurements for a piece of paper. Let's um, see if I can find something here that I can use to cut an envelope out of. Ah, here. I've been using this stuff. This stuff. I love the color of this. So. My first one, now let's see, this will be the bigger envelope, and I kind of like the size of this one. This one's adorable, and it's great in, in small tuck spots. I'll, the measurements for that are here. So the first thing that you need to do is cut, bring this in, I have a lot of stuff on my desk here, you guys, so bear with me. So I need to cut it. You're going to always cut it square. I think every single one of them is done square. Yep. Looking at the board. And you can tell that here. So this is your cut, your paper size that you need. This is what your card size will be. Now that means that your envelope will slightly be bigger than your card size. That's how it's designed. So you, you can get your card in and out. If you do it exact, it, it won't fit. You'll have to cut your card down. So they've done it so that this, it turns out once you fold it to be exactly like that. Okay, now mine is going to be cut at four and a half. So this is not an, I'm going to trim it first because it's not cut straight, I don't think. Yeah, actually it is. Okay. So four and a half. And this side straight, I do know that. Five, four and a half. Now this little piece I don't keep. The other do the other I I keep that because you can back um, really thin lined paper and get a nice like say you took something like this, which is really cheap, thin, you could glue it onto that and then have a pattern on the back and make cut out a tags and do all kinds of things. So don't get rid of stuff like that. Okay. Now, on my board I've written, cut it four and a half and score it one and seven eighths. Now with your board, you only have to measure once. I think that's where a lot of people make the mistake on using their envelope board. And they can't figure out why it's not working for them. This is why. So here you've got one and seven eighths. And I like to put, like, it's quite deep. So if you put your paper right in the center of the divot here, you're going to get a pretty accurate 
cut. So punch. And I'm going to take my little thing out. And then score it. Now I know you guys cannot see this because you're above me, but right in here you can see where the divot, where your line is now that you've made, your crease mark. And it's dead center of the curve. So what you want to do is you want to line up, I call this the nose, you want to line up the nose with the center of that crease that you've made. Ignore this ruler now. You don't need it anymore. You want to line this up dead center. Okay? Now, before you punch, if you can see the divot and you lightly run along here without really making your crease, you don't want to make your crease yet, and if it, if it hits that, then you know you've got it right. So then you punch, and then I'm just going to go a little bit harder. Turn it. Right there. It's a little tougher with cardstock because it's thicker. You have to run over it a couple times to keep your crease mark. Now you see, I've ended right here, right in the center. So it should fold correctly. Now, somebody left me a comment about watching someone fold these so that you get no white. Now you're not going to see white on mine because uh, it's two-sided. But if you're folding it and your envelope is white on the inside and you don't want to see that on the outside anywhere, uh, this is how they said to do it. Pull these together so that they're touching and then crease them. And in theory, you shouldn't see any white, but that doesn't always work if the envelope is an odd size. It does work in this case. So what they're talking about is see where this folds up? Sometimes your flaps stick out this way and you'll see a bit of white. So if you pull your tips together, if they line up with your edging, then awesome. You just, you know, score it, like bone fold it. Now, because mine is made up sizing, uh, sometimes mine will uh, fold over each other. One will be longer, you know, like you'll, you'll be like that. And that's perfectly okay. You're not going to see it anyway. Um, in this case, it fits perfect. Okay. So then, especially because this is cardstock, I'd never fold this back. If it's lightweight paper, you could fold this tip inside and glue it, and then you've got a nice firm. I don't need to on this because um, it's cardstock. So I just go ahead and, and I cut it off like so. Okay, then fold your flap down, bone fold that as well. And I don't use this side. You can put it in here and get your little curve on the end, but then it's still too long for me. I don't like it quite that long. So I just use a corner rounder for that. You can use a you know, small one or a wide one. I like the wide one. That just kind of finishes it off and it brings it up a little bit. Now before you glue it all, go ahead and ink it. Somebody also asked me, why do you ink your edges? A uh, couple of reasons. First, if you notice, even though this is double-sided paper, it still has a white core. So it looks more finished. Now, if you don't like that look, you don't need to do it like I do it. Just take it on its side 
and run it down like that. It won't come over the edge too much. If you don't like that sort of dirty look, some people call it. Um, if you just lightly run it along the top of your paper, you're basically just going to uh, cover over the white. Now, I happen to like this look, so that's why I do it this way. Because the paper cracked, I'm just going to go a little bit in here. There we go. And then take your glue. Now when you're gluing, don't go right to the bottom. Start above the curve, just above the end there. And I go right to the very, very edge. But then I also run some on this side. But don't go to the very edge on that or you will glue your envelope shut. How do I know this? <laughs> you guessed it. Okay. Now if you're unsure, like I said before, stick a piece of paper in there. And then just do this, give it a good rub, and anything that pulls out, just dab it off. Oh, I forgot to do that part with the ink. I'll have to do that. And if you forget to do stuff like that, then just squeeze your envelope a little bit. There you go. There is your envelope. Now there's several different ways of making closures for that. Uh, I've done it where before I glue it all together I make a slit and then it just tucks into the slit. You can add... Where's my ribbon? Hang on one sec. What did I do with it? Oh man, I got so much stuff. Oh, it's just completely buried. Oh, here it is. I've done it where I've done a piece of ribbon and just glue it like that and then it just tucks into the ribbon. Um, I've done it where you don't have anything, you just weight it down like this one. Um, yeah, does that need a picture? <laughs> like this one. And it holds, holds the flap down. So there's several different creative ways you can make a closure. I'm not going to do anything right now because I haven't decided what I want to do. But it's adorable, right? So that's the measurements for that. I'll give you the measurement for the other. Uh, so the one I just did is four and a half by four and a half and scored at one and seven eighths. Then 4.25, so four and a quarter by four and a quarter and scored at one and se uh, 1.75. Um, one and three quarters basically is what that means. One and three quarters. Okay? Also, you can do a four by four, that's the little teeny one, and score it at, oh sorry, this one gets you the long one, this one gets you the smaller one. Uh, one and three quarters as well. So score that at one and three quarters. Okay? There you have it. There's the little envelopes. That's what I've been working on. Now this is something I'm working on next. And I've taken, this is all dollar store uh, notepads. This is what it looks like. It was a gifty from somebody. I wish I could remember who. Um, came like this from, hmm, not sure who that's from. 
Anyway, I tea stained them. So I have four sheets. And I'm going to make a removable notepad. So all I'm going to do is take some cardstock and make a backing. So I'll cut the cardstock the same size as the envelope. And then I'm going to crease along here so that I have like an eyeball of where to apply my glue. So I'm going to apply my glue on all four pages and then attach it to the back of that. And then I might make a cover, I might not. Uh, it might just be like that. But the thought was to have my little note, removable notepad that I can on one page uh, glue some ribbon and it'll slide down inside the ribbon and you'll have a remov removable notepad. The reason I haven't done it yet is because I think I want to add some more pages which means I have to tea stain some more pages because I don't have enough done. So that's my next thing that I'm working on and hopefully, oh and no I wasn't going to do that. I wasn't going to put a cover because I was going to do this this and then I'm going to use one of the circles and fold the circle over like so. And so you've got a little decoration that will match and it's another way to use these. So you know you get several of these cut out. You could do something like that, fold it in half, bend it over, but I kind of like this one. So I think I'm doing that one. So that's it. That's what I've got for you this weekend. I'll update you a little bit. I'm down 17 pounds. Um, I feel like I'm doing really well. I'm down way more inches than pounds, which is awesome. Uh, still <laughs> long, 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 long way to go, but you have to start somewhere, right? And feeling tons of energy. I feel really good, you guys, so pretty happy about that. Uh, we're down to less, less than five weeks before our trip, and we've got a ton of things on the go at the house, which is one of the reasons I have not been posting too much because it's just a nightmare here trying to get all the people that you're hiring on the same page and some of them got sick and some of them had other obligations first and so we're waiting on a lot of that stuff and we need to have some things in place and completed before we leave on the 25th of next month so yeah it's been a little stressful to say the least. But my husband and I have been doing lots of walking. Um, he's been doing a lot of yard work. We've got loads of trees in our backyard and so he he was trimming down our uh, crab apple tree and some, I don't know, it's kind of like a bush tree that we have. I don't know what it's called. It's beautiful when it's in bloom. And it was leaning on our fence so he had to cut that down. Not the whole tree, I wouldn't let him and then um, trimming out all of our cedar trees, um, trying to get rid of all the ivy that is growing up the trees and along the fence. Tons of yard work. And the front yard, we hadn't even started that yet. We got all kinds of bushes and trees to pull out and cut down. Uh, we're bringing the garden closer to the house because the original owners had landscaped our garden all the way to the sidewalk but we don't own that property we own about half of that property and it's difficult now that they it's old growth so it's they're big bushes uh it's making it hard to get in and out of our driveway you can't see traffic coming because the, the bushes have grown ridiculously big and and we get them trimmed and everything but they they just grow like stink so we're we're getting rid of them and now that we're doing the front of our house and you know, my husband says, well, I want to see my house when I drive up to it, which makes sense. And uh, anyway, so that's what we're doing. We're in the middle of doing that. And he's in the middle of healing because of the ladder. He's worked his knee, uh, aggravated the knee, I should say. His knees are totally shot. And he ended up with this major goose egg on the side of his knee from swelling. So he's been kind of lame for a bit. And he's, like he said, he's got to get healed because we have to get all this stuff done before we go. <laughs> yeah, it's 
uh, it's lousy getting older. Uh, it's even worse when you've been injured and uh, that won't get better, you know. So you have to take it in small increments. And I'm not a lot of help because I'm little and uh, yeah, I can't, I can't do a lot of that heavy lifting stuff. Uh, so I haven't been much of a help. But we're also trying to get rid of a whole bunch of furniture and whatnot that uh, we're trying to sell, but we can't even take pictures of it because it's just crammed into the corner of the house, uh, making room for work we were doing in the garage. Well, now we have to empty the garage because we have the electrician coming and he's going to be rewiring um, and putting in pot lights outside as well. So <laughs> it's kind of ongoing mess is what I'm dealing with. If I didn't have the upstairs sorted and in place, I think I would go insane. <laughs> so that's my update. Thanks for watching you guys and hopefully it won't be as long period in between that I can talk again. So have a wonderful week coming up. Thanks. Bye.